Okay, hi guys. So recently, I posted this video of Metroid Prime running with full mouse and keyboard controls. And as you can see down here at the bottom of the screen, a texture pack that updates all of the button prompts and legends to the keyboard and mouse. Now I've gotten a lot of requests recently to help set this up. So what I'm going to do today is give you a full setup guide from start to finish so that you can get this version of Metroid Prime running on your machine. I have a fairly low spec gaming laptop, but I usually get about 60 frames per second running this in 720p resolution. I'll leave my laptop specs in the description below so that you can take a look and see how your computer might do. Without further ado, let's get started. Now we're going to need three things to make this work. First, we're going to need a custom build of the Dolphin Wii emulator. Second, the texture pack for the keyboard and mouse user interface. And third, you're going to need the Metroid Prime Trilogy ISO file. Now, this one I can't help you with because of legal reasons, but if you take a look online, I'm sure you'll find it. All right, so first stop, and I'll make this the first link in the description below. Uh, this is Shion's GitHub page. Now, this is the guy that built this custom version of Dolphin, the Wii emulator that enables the hack. I want you to scroll down uh, to Assets and download primehackrelease.zip. All right, second, second link in the video description. Uh, this is the Dolphin forums where Zombie posted his Metroid Prime Trilogy keyboard and mouse user interface texture pack. I want you to scroll down to download and click on V1.0 DDS. Go ahead and download the file from Mega and head to your downloads folder. All right, now let's take primehackrelease.zip and extract it. Do that just a second to process. All right. Now I'm going to rename this folder Dolphin Prime Hack. And this is going to be your install directory. Now you can move this, install it anywhere you want to. Uh, to make things simple, I'm just going to put it right in my program files. The next thing you want to do is create a new text document and label it portable.txt. Now all that does is change this to a portable installation of Dolphin. Uh, if you don't know what that means, it's just that all of the settings and all of the configuration files for this program are going to be self-contained inside this install directory, which is going to be very important in a moment. Start up Dolphin. Uh, you can go ahead and click yes or no to data collection. I always click no. And you'll notice a new folder here, user. Go ahead and open that up. Now over here, uh, you should have the Metroid Prime Trilogy keyboard and mouse UI project finished downloading. Go ahead and extract that. And open it up. Uh, you'll see three folders here. Ignore the first one for now. Orbitron font and Prime font are actually the same textures in two different fonts. One, of course, in Orbitron, and one in a font that's much more similar to the original Prime games. Personally, I prefer this one, so I'm going to open this up, uh, copy the R3M folder, and over here, I'm going to go to Load, Textures, and I'm going to paste it right here. All right. Head back up. And now we're going to take a look in controller configs. Uh, we're using the Ishiruka Prime Hack, so go ahead and open this up. Uh, choose whichever font that you chose a moment ago and open that up and move the contents of this folder over here as well. Oh, come on. There we go. And that'll just add two files that get used in the third game uh, to the rest of the texture. Personally, I'm not sure why Zombie included those separately. I'm sure there's some reason. I just don't know. All right. So now go back to user and back to controller configs. And you'll see hackconfig.ini and primehackwasd.ini. We're going to deal with primehack first. This is going to be your controller configuration, your virtual Wii remote for the game. So over here, go to config. We're going to create a new folder called Profiles, uh, another new folder called Wiimote, and we're going to move this over here. All right. 
Uh, last but not least, head back to your install directory where dolphin.exe is and move hack underscore config.ini over here. It'll replace the one that's already there with some updated settings. Right. And we are all set in File Explorer. Go ahead and open up Dolphin. First thing you want to do is head to Controllers, Emulated Wii Remote, Configure, and open up that prime hack WASD and load. And you'll see it fill in a bunch of things. Go ahead and close. Close. Uh, next thing, go to configuration and make sure enable cheats is checked. Without this, nothing works. All right, uh, a couple other things while we're here, go to paths. And you're going to need to put in the path here to your ISO file. Uh, now, personally, all of my Wii and GameCube games are stored right here. So I'm going to copy the address, go back to Dolphin, and I'm just going to add it here. So that's folder. And you'll see it adds the directory to wherever your ISO files are stored. Close, and you should see a bunch pop up, or only one if the only one that you have is Metroid Prime Trilogy. Uh, next, click on Prime Hack Settings, All Settings. Uh, I like to have my camera sensitivity around 20, but that's going to depend on your mouse. And down here, these are the hotkeys for the power beam, wave beam, ice beam, plasma beam, uh, and each of Samus's visors. The only one that I'm going to change right now is visor two because uh, that's the only one we'll be using in the tutorial and I'm just gonna change it to an extra button on my mouse for now. I also like to bump the field of view up to 72, but I wouldn't go any higher than that because at that point you start to see the cracks in the game. Uh, last thing, head to graphics. I like to use VSync and full screen. Uh, you should definitely hide the mouse cursor, and I like to see my frames per second as well. Uh, in enhancements, this is where you can bump up the resolution, but I'm going to keep it at one times for now uh, because the screen resolution software I'm running is pretty intensive. I also definitely recommend turning hybrid Uber shaders on if your graphics card can handle it. It increases the initial load time for Prime, but helps a lot with stuttering in the middle of the game. Head over to Advanced. Uh, you have to click Load Custom Textures uh, to, to load the custom UI textures. And if you have enough RAM for it, I also recommend Prefetch Custom Textures. Uh, these textures aren't, aren't a whole lot and aren't very large, so I would definitely recommend clicking this if you have 8 gigabytes of RAM or more. And that should be everything that we need. Go ahead and double click on Metroid Prime Trilogy. And this will take just a little while to load up. I'll fast forward the video until it's ready. All right, and you'll know that the texture packs work if you get this very cool splash screen that replaces uh, the old make sure your Wii remote strap is fastened screen. Still haven't decided which I like more. The original opening menu screen from Metroid Prime on the GameCube, or this new one of the inside of Samus's arm cannon for the trilogy. Uh, leave your vote in the comments below, I'm curious. And as you can see there, press left click to start. Nunchuck is required. That's funny. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and start Metroid Prime 1 up and make sure that these controls actually work.
And there we have it. Metroid Prime running with modern mouse and keyboard controls. Now, it's definitely stuttering a little bit because the screen recording software I have going on is also pretty uh, taxing on my system, but still running fairly well. All right, now it's going to say something about how to activate the scan visor, but we can just ignore what that's saying. Uh, instead, click whatever hotkey you set to visor two. For me, it was an extra key on my mouse, and you'll see the instant switch to the scan visor. And there we go, Metroid Prime, running uh, with Samus moving more like Doom Guy than Metroid Prime. Now, according to some people, this would ruin some of the atmospheric tendencies of the original Doom Prime games, but I disagree. I think it just feels more like the fast, powerful Samus that we know from the 2D games. All right, thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope it works for you.